Hi everyone, so today we're going to be starting 7-6. Yesterday you had a quiz. Um, I should have those graded in the next day or two. Um, and today we're basically going to end this unit. Tomorrow you're going to do a mishmash of all the sequences we've learned. And then Monday you're going to do a group work assignment that I would have planned in class, but you're going to do it solo. You can work on it with friends. You can work on it with people in the discussion board, whichever your heart desires. But today we're going to learn about our last type of sequence. And that sequence is called the recursive sequence. Um, recursive sequences are a topic that I would really, really like to teach in person, but due to the circumstances, we're going to have to do it virtually. Um, if you struggle with this topic, I promise you it actually does get easier. Um, you can meet me during my virtual office hours, or you can email me and we can set up a time to meet outside those office hours. So I'm going to read the learning target. Here's what you should be able to accomplish by the end of the lesson. You will be able to apply your knowledge of sequences by analyzing recursive sequences. And when we mean analyze, we're actually going to end up constructing the recursive sequence. So, sequences can be defined by this classic function formula, like we've seen the past couple of days with that whole a sub n, b sub n, f sub n, whatever your letters are. But, and I mean but, they can be defined recursively. So, what do we mean by recursive? Um, we're not talking about writing in script or anything, or writing in cursive like you would with a signature on a check or a signature when you sign a legal document. We're talking about the mathematics of recursive. A recursive formula is one where each term in the sequence depends on a term or terms that came before it. So for instance, you depend on your teachers to make sure that you understand the material. Like right now, you are depending on me, Ms. Schuster, uh, Mr. Ferrara, Ms. F, all those people, Ms. Townsend, to make sure that you're getting the stuff you need during this time. But let's be honest, we really only care about numbers and math, so let's just look at the get down to business. We're going to look at this first example, and we're going to end up writing the first four terms of the sequence, and we're going to show all of our work, as always, because Mr. O'Sullivan always says, show all work, no work equals no credit. Examine the recursive sequence below. A sub 1 is equal to 3. And then I have a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus a 5. We all know how to say that plus 5. We still struggle with saying a sub n and a sub n minus 1. So we know that our first term is 3, that a sub 1 is equal to 3. And our rule, or our sequence rule, or our recursive rule, is a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 5. What that a sub n minus 1 is telling you is that we need to look back to the term from before. So here's how I approach recursive sequence questions. I'm going to zoom in so I have a little more room to write. I have a sub 1 is equal to 3. I now want to find my second term or a sub 2. If I go back, this is really like an a sub n. I'm going to do a sub 2 I'm going to do a sub 2 minus 1. What's 2 minus 1? You guessed it, it's uno. So I get a sub 1 plus 5. Because I did 2 minus 1, which gave me 1. If we look back to the previous example, we said that a sub 1 was 3. So now I do 3 plus 5, which is 8. You guessed it, a sub 2 is 8. I'm going to encourage you to pause. If you're stuck, rewind a little, take a breath, and watch me go through it again. If you're doing fine, keep on going. We're going to do a sub 3 together. I now want to find my third term, but based off of 4, I'm now just going to do a sub 2 and add 5. 
we said before that a sub 2 was 8. So I'm now going to write 8 plus 5, which is 13. If you notice, I'm now going to do a sub 4. And we're just changing the a sub 2 to be a sub 3. And we add 5. We said before that a sub 3 was 13. So guess what I'm going to put in for a sub 3 now? I'm going to put a 13 in. And then I'm going to ask you, 13 plus 5? It's 18. So my first four terms are 3, 8, 13, and 18. If you notice, there was no multiplying, there was no division, there was no subtraction, it was all addition. Whenever I have just addition or just subtraction, and I'm going up by the same term each time, this is an arithmetic sequence. This is an arithmetic sequence. So, I'm going to just change my color. When I go from 3 to 8, I add 5. 8 to 13, add 5. 13 to 18, add 5. If you look at the question, all I'm doing is just adding 5 each time. You did not need to go through all this work. If you are stuck, take a breather, rewatch. We're now going to do our next example. We want to find the next four terms of the sequence. Define below. We know b sub 1 is 7, and we know that b sub i is equal to b sub i minus 1 plus 4. Again, we can actually just cheat. We can just add 4 each time. Which means b sub 2 is equal to b sub 1 plus 4. And I get that by doing 2 minus 1. We said before that b sub 1 was 7. What's 7 plus 4? 11. I now find b sub 3. But now instead of writing b sub 1, I just change it to a b sub 2. If you notice, this number right here, this 2, will always be one less than whatever I want to find. I'm going to add a 4 again. This number always stays the same. And I just do... 11 plus 4, which is 15. I just want to find one more because I only care about the first four terms. So b sub 4, what's 1 less than 4? It's b sub 3, you guessed it. And I'm still going to add a 4. We said before, b sub 3 was 15. So I do 15 plus 4, which is 19. Those are my first four terms. And again, if you look, I am just adding 4 each time. 7 plus 4 is 11. 11 plus 4 is 15. 15 plus 4 is 19. All of that is coming from this 4. So here comes our next level example. Our next level example says we want to write a recursive sequence based off the table of values below. Again, the first thing we care about is, is our sequence arithmetic or geometric? The first thing we do is we look at our values. When I go from 2 to 10, what do I increase by? I increase by a plus 10. When I go from 12 to 22, what do I go up by? You guessed it, it's another plus 10. 22 to 32, you guessed it again, it's another 10. And the last but not least, I add by a 10 again. Here is the rule. If you looked in the examples before, I always start with my first term. 
I start with like this B sub one, if you look at that example before. So the first thing we need in our recursive sequence is to have a B sub one. B sub one is our first term always. Our first term in the sequence was a two. So you guessed it, B sub one is equal to two. We now want to come up with a rule for b sub n. So we're now going to do something down here. We're going to write b sub n is equal to. We then write b sub n minus 1, because that's just the rule. We always look to see what's going on beforehand. And I'm going to give you a hint. All you do is write your common difference. What am I going up by each and every single time? It's my 10. So I just do plus 10. This is your arithmetic sequence recursive rule. b sub 1 is equal to 2, and b sub n is equal to b sub n minus 1 plus a 10. So now we have our final example of the notes today. We want to write a recursive formula when we're given a sequence rule. Note, this is our explicit formula. Our explicit formula is a sub n equals 4n plus 2. You'll see before that I need to have an a sub 1 I need to have an a sub 1 And an a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus a number. I'm just going to do a question mark. Um, so the first thing I would do is actually find out what my first term is. To find your first term, we simply plug in 1. Four times one is four, and I add two, which is six. 6 is my first term. Then what I'd recommend doing is find your second term. So a sub 2 equals 4 times 2 plus 2. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2, which is 10. You can actually stop right here. And I mean it. All you do is need two numbers. When I go from 6 to 10, what do I increase by? This is when I hopefully would hear an answer in class. I would increase by a 4. What that means is that my common difference is 4. Or my question mark is 4. So, my recursive rule for this question would be a sub 1 equals 6, because that's my first term. I got that by plugging in. And a sub n equals a sub n minus 1 plus 4. What I would recommend after looking at this problem is watch this whole video just one more time. I promise you, if you watch this video two or three times total, it will make 100% more sense. Your homework for this lesson is going to be a Delta Math assignment. Your goal is to just get five questions right. You can do 20 questions, but as long as you get five right, Mr. Osolov and Ms. Townsend, we are extremely happy. Again, remember, please make sure that you post one question you have about this video or this lesson, this topic, this material to the discussion board on Google Classroom tonight. Your question counts as your attendance for this class. Not only does it count as your attendance, it goes in your grade. So make sure you ask one question. And if you feel very confident with this material, answer a student's question. Lead them in the right direction. Keep the discussion going. Again, if you need me, if you need Ms. Townsend, please don't hesitate to reach out. Send us a private message on Google Classroom or send us an email. Remember, write your question, 
and watch this video a few more times. I promise you, if you watch it two to three more times, you will understand this topic. Thanks and have a nice day.